one lane and focuses on this, da -da -da, take a break and then stay on it. No, no, no. Let me go just completely switch up. Now let me just write a song about this. Okay, let me switch up. Let me do some comedy. All right, let me switch up. Now let me do some drama. You know what I mean? It just keeps everything fresh and exciting for me, and I think it shows when, uh, when you see the finished product. We have a question from Brilliant and Brave. And Come on, Brilliant. We got to wrap it up. So let's get them in questions. Yes. What's the best way to learn how to write a screenplay or script? And my brother K Tooks, the K Tooks spot, wants to know what was it like being back on Nickelodeon or working with Nickelodeon? What was it like? Nickelodeon was fun because that was my first job, you know. So I didn't know. The funny thing is, with Nickelodeon, we did three seasons. I started, I was 10, then 11, then 12. Right, so it's a ten year old. It's great. Um, actually, no, I take that back. It was twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Anyway, the first season, it was fun. It was just super fun. Like the creativity that they used to invent these games. We were all, you know, and we were we were like the grown ups of the other kids. Like you know what I mean? So twelve year old to be considered the top dog was kind of fun. You know, it was cool. Second and third season, it became more like work. Where I, you know, I kind of had a shorter few. The right, you kids, calm down. Now I know we're just playing. I got to read all these lines. I got, <laughs> I got to, you know, work all this stuff out. You know, we in the snow. They throwing snowballs at me in between takes. I was a grumpy little thirteen year old for a minute, uh, but no, but it was fun. It was, it was, it was one of the best experiences of my life. We then when the show became popular, we toured all over the country. So you know, and then we met, you know, I met Arnold Schwarzenegger in D.C. It was, I was like, oh, it was insane. But that was a lot of fun. Um, as far as writing scripts. Uh, this is how it, it, it worked for me. You have to take it in steps, right? You get the premise, the, the synopsis, you write the skeleton, find out where you want to go. I want to start here, I want to end here. And then you just fill in the blanks. Don't just start oh. writing. Oh, oh, day one, I woke up, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 you got to know where you're going, all right? You're going to write a script about something, this is what it is. But once you get those points, it makes it easier. And then you break it down. Break it down into acts. All right, act one, we're just doing this. This part, we're just doing this. This part, blah, blah, blah. And then take your time filling in, you know. You don't have to all write it in a row. It doesn't have to be all, you know, we start to finish. You know what I mean? That's not how we film. We film. We're going to start at the ending, and then we're going to jump in the middle, and then we're going to do here, blah, blah, blah. So just take each piece and then give it a good read, and you'll go, okay. And then everything will fill in the blank. And that works both with, you know, movies and TV. TV is structured differently with acts and scenes, how you break it up in between commercial breaks and blah, blah, blah. With movies, it could just be, you know, you can be creative with it. It can be long, short, however you do a short film, long film, but that's basically the gist. Absolutely. And speaking of writing, you've also given us some hits as well to some music. So you want to tell us about that? Yeah, it's fun, man. I've been doing music. Uh, it's kind of like a parallel career. So when people hear me, they're like, what the heck? Where has this been? Where have you been hiding it? And it's just been a lot. It's just been a lot. I mean, with my acting, you know, when I, when I landed, we talked about Baby Boy. When I did Baby Boy, yes. um, I'd always been a television actor, right? So when I did Baby Boy, by the time it came out, I had already landed another TV show that had me locked in for the next year or two. So when it came out, I started getting calls for, oh, man, I mean, I, I can name some movies. You'd be like, what? You were supposed to be in that? Yeah. They called me for several big films at the time, you know what I mean? And I couldn't do it because so I was on a contract. You know what I mean? I was on a contract with this TV show, you know what I mean? And that's just what it was. So the career is fun because I'm now, you know, I'm established and I can just kind of pick and choose what I want to do as far as like movies and stuff. Um, but at the time, you know, it was all about momentum and keeping it going. And I've always been blessed as far as working consistently with the music. It was the same type of thing where um, I signed a couple of deals. You know, we were signed to QD3 in the Sound Lab under Quincy Jones and uh, Tupac was going to marry his daughter at the time. So when he died, the whole label shut down. Everything, our deal, forget about it. Everybody went in the morning and everything was kind of split up. You know what I mean? And I was like, wow, oh, we about to blow up. You know? And it was like, mm, you know, there's always something intervening. Um, so it wasn't until I had my first child, uh, 45 now. I had my son at 40. And uh, right before I, he was, right, basically when my wife was pregnant, so I was about 39, I decided to put out a solo album. So I put out a solo album, it's only seven songs. It's called The Excuse. Um, I actually released it under Big O and then took it down and put it out under Oh My Goodness. Big O is my nickname. But, you know, a lot of people didn't know that. So I was like, why well, you put an album out under Big O? People can't find you, they don't know what you did. It didn't make no sense. So I re-released it under Omar Gooding. If you go to iTunes, Spotify, anywhere, you can go you type in Omar Gooding. And uh, it's one of the first things that'll pop up. And again, it's called The Excuse and it's produced. The whole album is produced by Focus, 
dot, 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 from uh, Aftermath. So it's like, it's like having Drake producing an album for me, basically, because it's phenomenal. When you listen to the music, you're like, oh my goodness. And, um, you know, I give you a little bit of everything. It starts off with me talking about my son, because I just, you know, he does have a boy. So I, 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 I actually, the same year my son was born, uh, four months later, my father died. So the first song off the album is called Better Me, which as I wrote it, I thought it was a song that I was dedicating to my son, you know, but after I read all the lyrics, I realized there's a lot of things that my father used to tell me, you know what I mean? So it wound up being like a double dedicated song. So it's, it's a real heartfelt song, how, it, how the album starts. And it's hip hop now, it's hip hop, I'm rapping. Like, oh, your father used to sing. You singing? No, I'm rapping. I do some melodies, you know what I mean? Little, little stuff now, m more so now uh, than then. But on this album, um, it's basically, it's talking about, it's called The Excuse, because it's my excuse for not, all, not really taking so long to put out music, but, but what I've been up to, what's been going, you know, questions that I get asked a lot in interviews. How's your brother? I'm talking about him a little bit. Hey, this used to date the girl that was in Baby Boy. Yeah, we're talking about that a little bit. Hey, you can rap. Are you really a rapper? Yes. And then I get out on that, you know, and then by the end of the album, it all builds momentum. So by the end of the album is a song that I released called Homage where I'm rapping double time, super fast. You know what I mean? It sounded like Twister. They're like, oh my goodness. Actually, it's, it's my homage. I'm paying homage to Busta Rhymes. So when you hear the beginning of the song, if you think Busta Rhymes, you're like, oh, okay, I see where he's coming from with that. Mm -hmm. And then it just, you know, but, but I've always been a lyricist. I've always been a thinker. I've always been competitive. Um, and it shows in my writing and delivery when I do my music. You know what I mean? I'm from an era where... The, uh, my parents were always like, that ain't real music. We had real music, that type of thing. I listen to rap now. Some of it I love because I get it. I get what they're going with. Some of it, you know, it got to mumbling and people, you know, under, not understanding fully what somebody is saying. That's where it started to lose my generation. But it was like, look, as long as you really write something and you're being creative, which is what hip hop really is about creativity, then it'll come across, you know? So anyway, so I did that album. That's out now. And then I just released an album with a buddy of mine who does a lot of, um, West Coast underground rap. His name is Stiley Ray. He's got like 30 mixtapes that he put out in West Coast, right? And I was just like, yo, bro, when are we going to do a mixtape? So he said, all right, I got one for you. And he sent me some beats, and I'm going to tell you, when I heard these beats, the songs just wrote themselves. This album, I'm very proud of this album. Um, it's kind of like the beats. It's where, because like I said, with, with The Excuse, the first album, it kind of starts here, and it slowly builds, and you go, okay, and by the end, I'm double time rap, blah, 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 blah. This one picks up, not with the double time rap, but that energy, that's where this one picks up. It starts off uh, with a song called Imaginary. Um, he wrote the hook, but it's about me and my life. You know, I talk about my brother. I talk about myself and, you know, my career and that type of thing. And then just being a real person, you know. So you, you hear people, especially celebrities, talk about, um, you know, they're celebrity or, you know, they're, they're the rappers talk about the money and the rings and this and that. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, look, I just want y'all to know I'm human. I'm a regular guy, you know? So when people meet me, they feel that. They say, wait, you don't mind taking a picture or doing this or talking to me for a minute? Sure. Unless I'm in a rush or, in a, <laughs> you know, but for the most part, yeah, I'll talk with you. I'll engage with you. But just remember, I'm a real person. So, you know, I, somebody tapped me earlier, but it was kind of like a grab my arm. Hey, you that guy. And I was like, settle down. I'm a real person. You know what I mean? You don't just grab on nobody you don't know. You know what I'm saying? So if you see my eyes kind of frowning, like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. But, you know, you can treat me like you know me, but let's just keep it realistic and, and you know, respect my space and that type of thing. But I'm not that guy going, oh, man, let me leave me be when you see me out. No, no, no. I stay at home if that's the case. I don't have no sympathy for these celebrities that be mad because you want to approach them. That's what we approach. Yes. Approach me. Let me know that you like what I'm doing and you love me because I love you back. Yes, and the audience, they love you here. I'm reading some of the comments they're going through. I had to block some trolls and get them up out of here. Um, the live catcher says, you are always a great comedian and a master at every role you get. And shout out to my brother, K Toops, again. He says, Miss Stevie and Omar, you are both doing an incredible job with this interview. Y'all are enjoying it. And y'all are talking about smart guy in the comments mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. So again, the impact. And with this album as well, too, mm -hmm. this sound, what can people expect with this with this album, this new album? Lyricism. It's lyricism um, technique. You know what I mean? I'm good with wordplay, uh, whether it's fast, whether it's slow. But now my content has gotten better. When I started off as a rapper, I kind of hid my identity. I rapped under Big O. 
I try. I talked about things other than myself. I tried to just be creative. Like, oh, it's, it's, talk about the moon and the stars and walking the dog. Like, yeah. People, if they say Omar Gooding is rapping, then we want to hear some things that sound like it's Omar Gooding. Okay, what he just said something about the show? He, oh, you hear that line we said about Baby Boy? Oh, he just said some snap and said, my brother does this, and I, you wouldn't have caught me out there. You know what I mean? So I'm just, I, I've learned how to connect with people through my writing a lot more than I used to as a rapper. So musically, it's going to be pleasing to your ears. Even the, and this is the interesting thing, too. This album, um, it starts one place, but it's, it, it also takes you on a journey. First couple of songs, it's more uh, hardcore hip hop, not hardcore. It's not like gangster rap or anything like that, even though my boy got that swag that's with me on the album. Uh, it, it starts off aggressive like that, and then it goes into a song called God and You, right? Uh, and then uh, one called Not Alone. Now, Not Alone was a song that I wrote during the pandemic. Where I had a conversation with a buddy of mine about the feeling of of hopelessness and feeling like you're being attacked personally during this pandemic. Mm. Everybody that was going through things and, and people have went through some horrific things. And throughout it all, it's not just you that these things are happening to. And most specifically with the pandemic, everybody in the world was going through the exact same thing. It may have affected you differently, but we were all going through the exact same thing. So we've never been more united <laughs> Then we were all fighting this pandemic together, you know, as we still are, as it, you know, gets dissipates a bit. But uh, the message is that you're not alone. Even if you're by yourself, you're not alone. You know what I mean? It's got the underlining, God is with you, ask for his help, and listen. You know what I mean? So um, that album goes there. And it, that hit a lot of people who really needed to hear it. You know, so it's a really powerful song, which I'm really proud of, because... It's like after I had the conversation with my friend, I went straight to writing. You know, it was great. And it was like everything that I was thinking about. And I poured it out. And I'm an actor, so I get into it. And then, I, you know, it's, it gets deep. Then we did a, a, a video for it. So the video was out as well. You go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel, Omar Gooding. And um, you can see the video, which is it's, it's a masterpiece. It's worked, it worked out really well because we actually shot half of the video about a year ago. Um, and then I shot the other half a couple months ago. Right. But the first part was with a real film crew uh, while we were filming the movie. Right. So it, it's real cinematic and it's cheap. You're like, oh, my goodness, what am I, I'm watching a movie here. And then it, and then I hired a guy that does just hip hop music videos. So then it has that mu music video feel spliced into it. But it's the yeah. best, best of both worlds. So, uh, yeah, we're excited about that. Um, and then, the, then it kind of transitions back into more raw hip hop. Uh, and then it's done. It's also another quick album. It's like seven, eight songs. You know what I mean? So right now, I'm in the process of putting together my first full-length album, right? So I'm going to put out the Omar Gooding album album, 16, 17, 18 songs. Probably take it back to the chronic, do some skits. I had a little bit of everything. Song for my wife, song for my kids, a couple songs. And, you know, I've got, I've got a little bit of everything on there. But it'll be well-rounded and put together. And I'm going to take my time. And I'm going to um, get some help from some friends. I'm calling some favors. Because I've been doing favors my whole career. You know what I mean? I mean oh, you need me? I got you. It's about to come full circle. I'm calling all these cats. I need yes. Remember that? I need you for that. You know what I mean? Last time I saw Snoop, I said, y'all got something coming. And he said, let me know, nephew. I said, all right, brother. I'm going to let you know. Unk. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of fun guests on my full-size album, which, like I said, I'm going to put together. I'll take my time with it. But I'll probably have it for everybody by uh, Christmas. All right. And then you said you've got your show with Disney. So it's nope. a lot you're working on. You have a lot coming out. And a so lot. we don't even have to say what's coming up in the future. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to bounce back to Smart Guy. Mm -hmm. Since we talked about music, yep. where would your character Mo be and Jason Weaving's character? Because people were saying, oh, well, you know, Marcus and Mo should have a spinoff. And right. I said, that's genius. You know, Fuller House did the reboot, and so many other shows are doing reboots. But you well, have it just depends on where you want to go. You have to be creative with it. I mean, it's like you know, I read a script where their idea was smart girl, and Taj, uh, the main character, had oh. twin daughters, and they were smart like him, and so forth. So you still have that aspect, and then the rest of the cast was just you know, where later or a little bit grown, and then that was that. Um, but it just depends on who writes it. You know what I mean? If it's Marcus and Mo's show and now it's this, and then you bring everybody around us or if you keep everything. But, you know, there's, there's plenty of different ways you can go with it. You just gotta, you just can't nothing to it but to do it. But the thing about Smart Guy, which people don't understand, well, I don't should say people don't understand, but the writing was great. The writing was 
phenomenal. I mean, for me, it just fit everybody so perfectly. Jason Reaver, that suave, blah, 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 but he was hilarious. Mo, he was supposed to just be the bully, but he had so much timing and swag about it. Now, nah, he was hilarious. Smart guy, this cute little kid. You know, they say the reboot. I said, well, he's grown now, so we got to figure <laughs> Ain't going to be no smart little kid unless we, you know, make it, like I say, somebody's child or niece or nephew or something and, and make it go from there. John Marshall Jones, Essen Askins. Come on now. Um, so that'd be great. You know, we're all we're all close and, and, and we still keep in contact and it's nothing but love when we see each other. So it wouldn't be no thing to put it together. We can make it happen. Yes, and shout outs to Kim Fields. Kim Fields said something when it pertains to the show, her show, Living Single. She said, if you're going to do a reboot, it's like when she did Living Single, it was like capturing lightning in a bottle. So you mm. have to be careful when you're doing reboots on such iconic cult classics. Again, you had Sister Sister, The Parenthood, yeah. Smart Guy. Yeah. You had Martin, um, Clueless, all that. Yeah, that's my you thing. Had I mean, if you can bring things. these, yeah, if you can bring a writer in that was either part of the original or that's so talented and undeniable, he gets the original so that you, you, you still stick to that base. Because it's tough. We did... Um, Barber shot the series for Showtime. It only yes. went one season. And I believe the reason that happened was because it deviated so far from the original fan base. The movie was PG-13 at worst. You know, you get, the whole family could watch it and enjoy it. The series was more like NC-17. It was all about sex and movies cursing and half naked. And it looked great, you know, for a young adult, <laughs> you know. But for the grandmas and the little kids, well, not, you know, t young teenagers, like that, it was inappropriate for them. But that was the fan base for barbershop. It was, you know, wholesome. The whole family come in and get their cut. We just took it to like barbershop after dark, and that's where you lost them. So you have to be tricky with these reboots and these adaptations to make sure that you stick to the true fan base. All right. All right, Fashion Dolls. It is question hours. Um, do we have any questions for Omar? Yeah, I'm so honored to be sitting with, here with you. Like I said, I was watching Smart Guy before we started the interview. <laughs> Make sure that I get up in there. Because, it's, yeah, it's a couple episodes. The House Party episode, of course, the episode with Destiny's Child. Again, Beyonce. Yeah, I've done so much Beyonce. since. I'm, like I said, I'm 45. I was 20, it was about 20 it was well over 20 years ago. And um, this was 75 episodes of that. A couple of the series I signed on to. 91 episodes of Bounce. So when you bring up an episode, I was just like this, huh, yeah, what I do next? Like, I can't wait. I'll watch Smart Guy now and be laughing, not knowing what's coming next on most episodes. Destiny's Child was pretty iconic. I mean, with her, that was fun, man, too. Because they were still Destiny's Child at the time. It wasn't like, oh, they blew up to be Beyonce and so forth. And there was still a big deal. You know, we were a pretty big deal, but it was still kind of like, oh, man, we got Destiny's Child. This is awesome. And I remember they invited us to see them live at the, I think, the Greek theater when they were performing, and we just wound up not making it or whatever. They were like, you got to see us outside of this element, but we're like, we're a little bit more grown. Like, you know what I mean? We're just like, oh, okay, I don't know what that is, but we'll see. And then we you know, found out years later. But uh, very professional, you know what I mean? Everybody was about their lines and wasn't real giving and, and, and open to suggestions and that type of thing. So it's a great time. Oh, the questions are rolling in. We've got uh -oh, one from Hurry up, everybody was doing Two more questions. What's that? And she says, is there going to be another season of Family Time? And shout out to my brother, K Tooks again, the K Tooks spot. He wants to know, is there anybody that you would like to, that you wishes you work with currently? Uh, family Time, I believe that's done. I mean, it's we did 91 episodes, so we were trying to get to 100. Uh, we did back-to-back -back seasons right before the pandemic. So that's why it just kept rolling along during the pandemic, which was great. Um, but I think everyone else is kind of, we've all kind of scattered, you know, so it's going to be tough to pull that one back together. Um, and what was that question? Uh, oh, does anybody want to work with? Any? Uh, yeah. I have a bucket list of actors and actresses that I would love. I would love to, I had the pleasure of working with Holly Berry. So I was able to cross that off the list. Um, I obviously would love to work with my idol. My idol, the, the top dog for me is Denzel. So, you know, I only oh. met him one time after I had done baby boy. They actually called me in for Antoine Fisher. This is one of those move one of them. Oh my goodness! But I was under contract and I couldn't even go in and read and see him nothing. But I saw him at a boxing match and he shook his finger at me like that and I went, mm. I'm like, "That's all I need." Uh, but <laughs> but I would love to get out with him one day. You know, God is good. His timing, his plans. So we shall see. And of course, I get this question all the time. I don't know if it popped up in here. My brother, him, and I, um, we shared the small screen once and it was fun. 
Uh, and it was uh, on a project called uh, Big Time in Hollywood, Florida, where he did an entire season for Comedy Central. But I came in for one episode. I was one scene, actually. Um, and it was fun to just, you know, to get out with him. You know what I mean? It was really cool. So um, right now, it's, you know, it's busy. Life is busy. Who's busy? He's running around doing his thing, directing and producing as well. He signed on to another series show as well. So it's like, whenever we can find a way to make both our worlds kind of just ah, lock in at the same time, we'll knock something out. But that that's coming as well. All right. All right. All right. I appreciate you. Though. Yeah, that was that, that was a whole lot of fun. And I got some more stuff coming, too. I got other projects I want to talk about. So we'll just stay in touch in the DMs. And if I come in here and play a little clip while we're on here and do some things, we're going to make some things happen. Yes, it was such an honor to sit with you, ladies and gentlemen. Omar I have better lighting next time, me. too. I don't know what this here is. Look, that, it got worse when I turned the light on. So I don't know what. I'm kind of in the dark, but I'll make it. I'll make it better next time. Thank you so Perfect. much. It was such an honor sitting here with you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Joining me tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, from the hit show for the boys, Drake Coleman will be joining me. Much love to each and every one of you. Good night, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and this interview will be up on IGTV. I'm your beautiful hostess, Miss Stevie, and thank you all for tuning in. Mwah. Good night, Miss Stevie, and thank you for bringing this to us. This is such a gift. Yo, make sure to take care of yourself out there. And viewers and subscribers, keep subscribing, keep viewing. Y'all know, share, comment, yeah.